Hi there, I'm Dr. Barrett. I am a Stanford trained neurologist and I have taken care of patients with headaches for over 25 years. And I am here today for one reason. And that's because there is new science and technology that is changing the lives of people with headaches. And you won't find out about it in your doctor's office. Discovery number one, nutrient deficiencies can be a real issue. Magnesium, probably most of you have heard about taking magnesium for headaches. Here is an article that's a fantastic overview of this for those of you who want to dive deeper into that science. The second nutrient that has become a big player is omega-3s. Um, and here again is an article about that. This is a study of altering N3, that means omega-3, and N6, that means omega-6, fatty acids for headache reduction in adults with migraine. Now, this study was fascinating because they did three things, which you can see here. They had people eat more salmon. That's at the bottom left. It was four to eight ounces of salmon a day. They swapped out their oils. They had people stop using high omega-6 oils like vegetable oil, canola oil, and instead they had them use olive oil, flaxseed oil. And then the third thing they did was have people eat flax seeds which are down there on the bottom right. And you know what? People had a 50% reduction in headaches in the space of three months by doing just this. So if you have any doubts that nutrition can change your brain and your migraines, this study and those like it should completely alleviate those concerns because you do have the capacity to improve the health of your brain and reduce your migraines just by changing what you eat. Second discovery, leaky gut is contributing to headaches for many people. So here's what happens. You see a normal gut lining on the left. See where it says normal tight junction? Tight junctions are just the spaces between individual cells. The cells lining your gut are those lighter pink things that look like they have little fingers on them on the left. And then the red thing along the bottom, that's your bloodstream, okay? So your gut, gut, like literally the contents of your gut, it's where those little fingers are. Then there's one cell, one cell. And then on the other side of that is your bloodstream. So what happens when that one tiny little cell becomes damaged by numerous different things? Well, you can see that the bad guys start to get across between those cells, that's where the, the leaky word comes from. The gut becomes leaky. It doesn't, those tight junctions are no longer tightly linked together. So that's where the leaky comes from. Stuff from your gut contents leaks across that lining between the cells that used to be tightly connected and now it can get into your bloodstream. And once it gets into your bloodstream, your immune system reacts to it and causes inflammation because your body generally does not want the stuff inside your intestines to be floating around your body, right? Makes sense. And we, if we have learned anything about migraine in the past 10 years, it's that inflammation plays a much bigger role in migraine than we previously thought. Again, I've got the citation there for you at the bottom. It's a fantastic overview. Discovery number three, adrenal fatigue which can cause all sorts of symptoms. Um, this concept has been around for a long time. We've actually evolved it to a different concept called HPA axis dysfunction. It basically refers to this concept right here. When your body goes into stress, your cortisol levels go up, all right? That's the picture on the left. Now we all know stress causes headaches, and headaches cause stress, right? You miss a day of work, now you're behind, you have more to do, you miss out on time with your kids, now you're upset, you know? So it goes both ways, right? Anybody who's had headaches knows that there's a very intimate connection between headaches and stress. So your main stress chemical is called cortisol. So here is a graph of it on the left, you see the little black dots. So when you first get stressed, your cortisol levels go up, but, over time, we start to see the pattern on the right where that's labeled adrenal exhaustion. See how the dots are super low? Your body can't even make cortisol anymore. And this was a big part of my own headaches. Um, and it's a big problem to fix, but it is doable.
These are some of my favorite biohacking devices. I've bought them all so that you don't have to. I show you exactly what you need for your particular situation so that you can learn how to rewire your nervous system and get out of adrenal fatigue. And what all this does is it changes the environment for your DNA. Have you heard of epigenetics? That's the science where you can actually turn genes off and on. Yeah, well, the three things I have just talked about are the way to very powerfully turn on and off various genes related to healing. Many people feel frustrated because they have migraine genes. I do too. Um, but there are ways to essentially make those genes flip on or off depending on what you need. Does this work? Absolutely. This is a screenshot from Migraine Buddy that one of my students sent me. Her headache days were cut in half in January when she started the program. And so these are the results you can expect when you focus on healing your brain to relieve headache pain instead of just putting a Band-Aid on it, which is what we're doing with pills. I have nothing against pills. They're an important part of headache management but it doesn't actually fix the underlying problem. Nothing works for everybody, but when it does work, it can be life-changing. I just worked with two different people who had been on disability for their headaches in the past, and now they're down to one to two headache days a week. They have their life back. So if you feel like this might be a good fit for you, I will see you soon, alrighty?